All right. I think we are just about ready to get started. Let's see folks in the chat. What's up, Sour Lad? What's up, Iconic? What's up, Eric? Give me one sec. And we'll jump over to the Beatbox Jam Stream layout. And we will get started. Just tweaking sound settings at the moment because I had to change everything when we did the karaoke stream. Let's jump over and then I'll, I'll keep tweaking stuff. There we are. I need to make sure I've got my notifications on so I can hear them this time. Oh, uh, let's see. Before we, we get into stuff, I'll do sort of an intro. And the last couple times I've sort of done these intros and explained what we're going to be working on. I put down just a real simple beat in the background so it's not dead silence. As we're getting started, uh, let me know if you folks have trouble hearing me. It uh, looks like everything is good on OBS. In fact, I'm going to put that on my main monitor. And if I need to, to boost anything, let me know. Iconic says, hope you are well. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, I could have slept more yesterday. But other than that, I am doing all right on this Sunday. So let me see. I'll put I'll put down a real simple beat in the background. And just drop it down so we have some background noise, and that can test my uh, sound system here. So maybe we can do something real simple, just like a. We'll just leave that in the background. Doesn't doesn't need to be perfect. We'll just be a, a little bit of, of extra noise. Hey, Naked Snakes here. Naked Snakes says, "Yo, what is good, Snake? Welcome to the Jam Stream." Yeah, it sounds like I could have I could have. Fix the tail on that one a little bit, but again, it's fine. We're going to delete that in a second anyway. So it seems like a couple weeks since we've done one of these. I think I tend to do them every other week, depending on how the stream schedule looks. So today, I definitely want to work on some drills and sound practice and basically freestyle practice, primarily so I can get better at Pulling beats out of thin air, especially when we have things like the redeems. And if people, you know, ask me to drop a beat when I'm not doing something beatbox focused, I can readily have stuff good to go and be able to pull that stuff out. Snake says, I can't believe somebody bought Wazi Common Rider. Yeah, that is that is very suspect. And my suspicion was that it was you, Snake, but if you swear that it wasn't you and someone stole your thunder, then you might have to just convince Wazi to put another common Rider item on her throne and then buy her that. Oh, Snake says, I found, I was, found out it was Mysterious Phoenix. Oh. Clearly, you just need to add more common Rider properties on there. So eventually she's forced to deal with a whole pile of media. To be fair, she's the one who put the stuff on there. So if, I guess she assumed no one would purchase it for the sake of the memes and the jokes. Little did she know the lengths to her community will go to in order to troll her. I told her, I said, don't put anything on there that you absolutely don't want someone to buy because someone will probably buy something. And she said, nah, it, it'll just be funny. I said, okay. 
Now look what, what happened. I think it's funny. Iconic says she underestimates the crew's power. Naked Snake says, next I'm going to request Yu-Gi-Oh cards. For, as someone who likes to, to play jokes and, and pranks on people, at least for Wazi specifically, you would think she would be aware of the power that her crew has when it comes to jokes. But, uh... Maybe she just assumed when it came to buying things, no one would be willing to... throw down money in order to troll people. Eric, Sal Eric Salamandra says, yo, Raku, do you like that restaurant Wendy's? You mean Wendy's nuts hit your face? Oh. <laughs> or did you, you le legitimately, are you asking me if I like Wendy's? Because there aren't any around me. I don't not live in a Wendy's prone area, unfortunately. But if I did, I would go because they do decent burgers. Naked Snake says, doesn't matter what people will buy stuff out of spite. Well, well, yeah. That is, that is true. Obviously, if you put something super expensive on there, people probably won't just up and buy it. But... If it's really funny, then it's very possible some people might pull funds on the side to buy something if it's a really good joke. But I think the point to remember is that the thrones are there for funsies, so no one should feel obligated to go and buy stuff on there. But I think it's entertaining. I I'm thinking about doing one at some point. Maybe down the road as we get more of a a group together on these. It's not high priority for me. Iconic says that but um beat was great. I didn't do the I didn't do the, the culture hub theme. That's that's when I make a silly joke, not when you guys do it. Eric says I kinda felt for that yesterday. Well the problem is on a lot of streams, I'm usually just there hanging out in the background, so I see some of these attempts to say silly things that you guys post. And I don't know them all. I fall from eventually. Uh, of note, I think Candace was one I've seen. I've seen a bunch of them when it comes to the, the classic D's nuts jokes. I kind of says, yeah, I protected bits from getting it. He jumped in front of the bullet, huh? True hero. Alright, so what are we going to be breaking down today? Like I said, uh, kind of like we've done before, I'm going to be working on drills. Kind of an explanation of sound theory, if anything kind of comes to mind, if people have questions and stuff I'm working on. And we'll do that for probably about roughly half of the stream. Then we'll switch to BGM creation and brainstorming. I did have an idea that I wrote down for the last one that we didn't have time for that I want to explore today. And then we'll just see how long that takes. Lion Tamer says, pull the piccolo. Hey, what's up, Lion Tamer? That is, uh, that is definitely true. Iconic is the hero we don't deserve. Eric says, also talking about us pranking Wazi, I decided that after being called a cyber bully by becoming a patron, I'll become a true bully. Uh oh, you're an, you're an investor. Doesn't that mean if you make art requests via the Patreon, then she has to draw them? All right, let's go ahead and clear this off. And we'll go ahead and run through some warm-ups, and this will be a good way to sound, continue to sound check. I need to be able to hear myself. 
and that should be fine. I'm going to keep an eye on the readout and, and make sure I'm not pointing directly at the mic for some of the sound and blowing people's eardrums out. And then we'll run through some warm-ups, kind of a mix of warm-ups and freestyle drills. And then we'll see what kind of sound theory things we have to talk about and then proceed from there. So let's do it. normally practice basses this early but I'm trying to warm my throat up faster one so it makes it easier on my voice and two so that I can have sounds on on demand when I need them but I'll be kind of working in different types of bass as we go not just the <clears throat> voice based ones I see Eric in chat yeah I'm gonna make her draw Zach Fair doing the death pose of family guy next time I know I've I've seen someone else request that, like falling down the stairs, dead pose before, but I think it was for her. Iconic Redeem Hydrate, thank you. I'm always impressed with your folks' ability to request cursed things for Wazi to draw. That's mainly the reason why I never request stuff when I'm hanging out on our art streams, because you folks do a pretty good job of coming up with amusing and interesting things for the request to draw. All right, let's see. We'll keep working on some warm up and practice beats. Herit Redeem save reminder. All right, I will save my work on the loop station that I haven't done yet. That is actually gonna be a pretty good redeem to remind me to save when we're working on the actual BGM stuff because very frequently I'll be messing around on the loop here putting different sounds together and I will forget to save for like 10 minutes and then screw something up so definitely remind me when we're working on the actual BGM stuff hey bits redeemed hydrate what's up bits how you doing welcome to the jam stream hope you're doing well on this Sunday all right, what else are we doing for warm up? I want to do a couple patterns using the zip sound. Because I feel like I slot it into a lot of patterns and stuff, but I don't really work on drilling just the sound because I really do use it a lot. Bit says I'm playing Wonderlands. Oh, Borderlands? I thought I saw you were playing Borderlands. Eric says, you all shall save before I go crazy. That's 
important for for those of us that forget to save. We have the save police. So that's much welcome, especially since I'm guilty of doing that all the time. Iconic says, best of luck with the Tina that is tiny. Yep, make sure to get all of the Borderlands. I know, I know nothing about that game other than what I watched on Bits' stream. But it looks interesting. The last Borderlands game I played proper was 2. But from what I understand, that spinoff's like an RPG. So that's cool. All right, let's see. So zip, the zip sound, which I've talked about a little bit before on previous streams. It's been a while. I know it's been a while. But for folks that may not have heard my explanation, the zip sound is a kind of like a filler. I use it more like a hat than a snare. It could be used really either way. And it's it sounds like this. It sounds like a real quick kind of shooting sound, almost like a kind of like a projectile being shot. But it is quick and rapid, which means it can be used in between different sounds in beat constructions, and it's very handy. So if I were to do it in succession, it might sound like, and I gotta be careful. That's actually kind of a loud sound, so it would sound like in rapid succession, and you you'd hear me do it in different beats where I might do something like. And he's like a kind of a filler in between to get that sort of sound variation. And I do it all the time. Well, part of the drill that I want to work on, you could do this in the form of just a beat, is working on much more rapid applications of the zip sound. So it's not just in, in, in vacuum by itself with a singular sound chain back to back. And probably the most useful way I've found to employ the sound is using a triple kick after the zip sound. And like a triple kick is like a BTB sound with a kick, hat, kick, and a triple it back to back for a, like a triple kick on a drum set. And that sounds like pretty simple sound, but kind of difficult to master because it's very fast and requires a lot of really specific muscle memory. And, and as you do it more, it gets a lot more clean. But if you chain that with a zip, you get something that sounds like And it's a little bit subtle to hear, but it's taking the condensing it down a little bit and then sticking it together with the triple kick. And that's how you're getting the And it's good for, again, that rapid type filler sound with an actual kick behind it instead of just, you know, on its own. Eric says, wait, the beat was called the sea salt. You're talking about the one I was just using as an example. The stuff that we're doing here is just for the sake of, of demonstrating and practice. So as far as n names and terminology for like the patterns, usually it's just improvised stuff that I'm using to demonstrate whatever sound theory thing I'm talking about. But for taking like a zip triple kick and putting it into a beat, one thing I've been messing around with kind of a lot to just practice, we'll be doing like a single kick, a zip triple kick, and then another zip kind of alternating kick, zip triple kick, kick, zip triple kick, if that makes sense. Oh, Eric says, yeah, the first one I thought you called it sea salt. Uh, no, I didn't call it sea salt. We're just talking about, about terminology. If I actually have a named pattern or beat type thing that I've created, I'll let you folks know what it's called. Hey, Core Break's here. Core Break says, yo, Raku. What's up, Core Break? Welcome to the Jam Stream. Hope you are doing well on this Sunday. I have to remind myself what day it is. All right. So what do I mean by employing a zip triple kick into a, a pattern? And 
Iconic says, not going to lie, I thought that was another D's nuts joke, Eric. Yeah, I did too, honestly. I, I thought you were you're leading me for a, a D's nuts joke. Now I'm just constantly waiting and predict, trying to predict them. <laughs> Hey, Edwards here. Edwards says, a triple kick sounds like it could be troublesome to notate. Mm, not not terribly. I'll, I'll show it in chat so we can get in the habit of looking at beatbox notation just so people are kind of familiar with the, the way the notes are written. So I'll put it right underneath our, our practicing thing. I need to do lowercase p. So you can see on the caption, the pattern here, uh, I don't think my cursor will show up on the screen, but it says Z lower, capital Z, lowercase p, and then capital B, T, B. That is the pattern that I've come up with for this particular combo of sounds. I, I don't think it really matters since the zip sound is not one commonly used in beatboxing, but we'll use it as a way to put the pattern together here just so people know. Lion Tamer says it's Sunday. Oh, that's right. While he's doing Pokemon Crystal with crowd control. That is true. Uh, I'm going to try and make that stream, but I'll be out in the evening. I might have to go and catch the archives for him. But I trust you folks to make sure she has a good time in Crystal. Eric says, nah, no feeling like a D's nuts. I just blow up one of my wife's Toyotas running from the police right now. Die. Right. My motto is always suspect the D's nuts joke. All right. So let's let me try to illustrate what I've been talking about with this uh, zip triple kick combo. And let's see, I see kick, triple zip triple kick. We'll try and do it that way. So again, triple the zip triple kick by itself sounds like if you do it slow. The pattern I was practicing just to sort of get in the rhythm and habit of doing that chain quickly was something that might sound like. Oh, okay, it's kick, zip, zip, triple kick. My bad. I haven't, I haven't written this down in a while. And so putting it into action, it would sound like. And that's just a drill. You could kind of twist it around and make a beat, but it's really just how to practice a staggered kick, zip, zip, triple kick over and over again and learn how to get it clean and, and whatnot. And that's what I've been using just as practice. And so if we take the idea for the zip sound and just slot it into a beat as kind of the dominant noise effect we're using, you can also vary either single or double chains of that zip sound back to back in addition to whatever else you're doing with the drums. And so a different permutation on that and that uses the zip in kind of place of hi-hats and other things might be a beat that sounds like let's see um that might be a little bit too complicated that's kind of a I did like three Frankenstein beats stapled together with a slightly different rhythm but the way the the zip fits in is just like a hat let's see Corbrake says I saved over 2k for crowd control and crystal Corbrake said nice I'm learning how to beatbox so I can be submissive and beatboxable well if you start deciding to learn how to beatbox and ever want advice or have questions on stuff, then these jam streams are the place to ask questions. If uh, you're ever curious about technique or whatnot, feel free to 
to drop by here and ask. Corbett says, what's a hi-hat? Oh, okay. So we talk about instruments and equivalents to instruments in beatboxing. That, that's a good question, Corbett. So if you think of a drum set, and you think of the array of instruments around the drummer sitting at the drum set, the, you have a snare, which is usually right in front of them and below, and it's like a flathead drum. depends on the tension, kind of what sound you get. But on the snare itself, you might get a PF snare type noise, which sounds like you might get a more sharp, almost rim shot or kind of like a snapping type sound, which is an outwards K. This again, this is snares. And that would be something like you might get a slightly more breathy and sharper kind of airy sound for a snare, which would be like an inward K, which sounds like and there's a whole bunch of other snares, but the rest of the things on the drum set, you might have toms, other types of drums that'd be something like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, like the Phil Collins solo in, in the air tonight. And then you have a bunch of cymbals all around. There are crash and ride cymbals that are kind of suspended and hanging. And then the hi-hat is usually to the left of the drummer. It's a thing that looks like a sandwich of cymbals. And it opens and closes depending on the, the pedal that's being pressed. And so hi-hat sounds in beatboxing will be something like a like closed hi-hat when it's together, not getting much echo and resonance. So that's how you're getting just the T sound. The if you open the hi-hat, you might get, be getting a more resonant sound like a TS or a tss. You have the kind of standard-ish jazz rhythm that folks here have probably heard in some form or other. I don't know the official name, but something like it. That's all on the hi-hat. And you could do something like a hi-hat run where you're doing a rapid rhythm of notes, like two drumsticks on the hat and then alternating between that and the snare. And it might sound like... And you just have the is like your hands doing a constant rhythm on the hat and then alternating hitting the snare every few beats. Core break says I've always wanted to learn I always wanted to beatbox, but I can only do a simple beat over and over. Well, that's where it starts. It, nobody starts beatboxing just right out the gates, day one, being able to do like crazy, complicated stuff. You don't you know, pick up the, the music form and immediately you're doing No, no, no one does that. You, you start really basic, just like you would learning a drum set, you know, simple rhythms and simple instruments until you get familiar and kind of consistent with them. It could be easy, as simple as boots and cats, right? Boots, cats, boots, Cats, boots, cats. That's where most people start just teaching where the sounds come from. But from there, once you start getting consistent rhythms and get familiar with where the sounds come from in your mouth, you start switching things up and experimenting and, and working in other sounds. You build complexity from there. But everybody starts off with the basics. And starting with the basics instead of you know jumping into crazy technicality or bass sounds, is much easier because he builds a foundation just like you know when you're doing physical training you don't start with top speed sprints you start getting your conditioning and endurance up by starting slow with jogging and whatnot and then you build your complexity from there Corbett said then I tried that zip BTB thing and was able to do it oh okay well, that's that's good. The I haven't really broke down the technique for the zip. I can hear folks are interested in, in how it works. Basically, you're taking the word zip, Z-I-P, and you're taking the I out. So it's just Z-P. And I do it through my teeth almost completely together, not clenched. You don't want to clench your jaw in beatboxing. But you're taking a burst of air, and you're, you're going zip really fast, and then 
clamping your lips down at the end, which creates that kind of popping, sharp cutoff on the sound. So if you just go zip, 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 pretty, doesn't have an, an audible kind of hard hit, but you work on cutting off the P sharply with your lips over time. That's how you get the and you, it requires less and less air, the better you get with the technique. And that's how you're able to do it really rapidly. So instead of just, you start doing things like a zip B, a zip kick back to back, just two sounds in a chain and you get And then from there you add the triple and that's how you're getting the I added the, the stagger kick and zip in the other one just to give it some space. But in reality, if you want to push rapid chains of that sound, I've done it before. Something like a that zip be, you know, as fast as you can go as a chain. So you might do something like a break in a dubstep beat. So something like. And it's just kind of an interesting way to vary up the rhythm and sounds are slotting into your beats. And I don't hear a lot of people use that one. Oh, I see in response to the hi-hat discussion, Core Break says, I see, thank you. Part of the way I beatbox before I was just slamming my tongue against my teeth. For creating the hi-hat sounds, it's a matter of just taking the T sound, like any word with a T, and taking the vocalization off and just getting that kind of tap with your tongue. So thinking about where it is in your mouth position, be something like just basically teeth almost together, not closed, and you're just tapping your tongue against the back and then metering the breath be like a tap. And when you first start learning it, obviously it's going to be messy, but you practice it and just and it sounds simple, but over time it gets much cleaner and then you know they start speeding it up and changing the rhythm like triple triplets or the open close hi hat thing we talked about snake jazz if you watch Rick and Morty that ah sorry I'm catching up on chat Wazzy says what happens if someone redeems drop a beat on a beatboxing stream uh I am required to drop a beat. And speaking of which, Wazzy dropped drop a beat. So we will go ahead and do that. And I don't have to pause any audio because I have nothing playing. I would say that if you want me to drop beats during the practice sessions, feel free to redeem that or save it for when I'm not doing beatboxing stuff. It doesn't matter. You can use that redeem however you want. It is your points to cash in on whatever you want to cash in. All right, so let's see. Maybe we can employ some of the, the zip techniques and hat techniques we talked about with everything we talked about for just the the drop a beat thing because it's going to segue into freestyle and, and a pattern and routine construction, which we normally talk about anyway. Iconic says, would... You drop the beat you were doing to drop a beat. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, if someone redeems that like Wazzy did, I'll kind of stop and pause whatever we're talking about and dedicate something improvised to that. You know, if I'm sitting there messing around with an instrument and explaining things to you folks, and I happen to be doing a beat when that's redeemed, I think it'd be kind of cheap just to say, well, that was it. You know, that was your beat. In fact, I think it'd just be more fair to say, okay, let's pause and do something Specifically for said person in stream, in chat. So for Wazzy, let's see. I will try and slot in something with the zip. Zip some zip and hat type sounds will kind of illustrate what we're talking about here. So let's see. Bin, 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 bin,
I see Edward says, I'm going to entertain the chat with some fun facts. Uh-oh. Connick says, or Corbrake says, oh no, more D's and nuts jokes. Very, uh, very possible. Iconic says, just doing funny play on words. Eric says, did you know that your eyes are always looking at your nose and it's just ignoring it? Yeah, it's kind of weird how if you look straight ahead or down, you're basically obscuring your vision partly because your eyes are pathing by your nose. It's also interesting that if your normal vision is partly obscured because you're looking out of two perspectives, which you can tell by opening and closing one eye, but when they're both open, your your brain is just so used to it, you don't realize you're essentially duplicating two perspectives. Corbrake says, dude, that was amazing. Ah, oh, thanks, Corbrake. You're too kind. Eric says, cool beat. Wazzy dropping the emotes in chat. The, the Esh emote. I'm, I'm glad that one's getting used. I think I got one more month to go, folks, before I can add follower emotes, so stay tuned very soon once those are available all, all you folks that follow will have things you can you can throw in the chat um, again I'm, I'm not too thrilled that it takes two months or 60 days but them's the rules Eric says fun fact two teeth is one of the only parts of our skeleton we normally clean oh fun fact two teeth are one of the only parts of the skeleton we normally clean uh, Corbett says fun fact three your bones are wet <laughs> That is technically true. If Mr. Dirtbones was here, I'm sure he'd have something to say about that. Right, let's see. We are... Oh, it's been 40 minutes already. Jeez. Time flies when you're talking about beatboxing. So we talked a little bit about... A, some instrument type techniques, things like the zip. I mean, one of my favorite sounds, I try and work into patterns and whatnot just because it's fun to do and it's a little bit unusual sounding. I did want to talk a little bit about bass. And we usually devote a little bit of these jam streams to talking about bass technique, bass theory, and kind of bridging the gap between bass and synth sounds. They're, they're very similar depending on what sound you're using. But I think it'd be fun to sort of do sort of a status check on bass sounds. And I did want to talk about a prototype sound that I've not shown off on stream yet. It's a bass type that I've kind of invented because I cannot find anyone in the beatbox scene that does something like this. Uh, so I want to talk about that here to sort of put it out there and maybe start working in the patterns to sort of switch up the different bass sounds. Sourlad says, fun fact. Four, your skin is both strong and weak at the same time. Your skin is also technically the biggest organ in your body, I believe. And it's on the outside. Corporate says, why do you think you have to drink water, Wazzy? Your bones are thirsty. Corporate says, at Sour Lad, unless you have Ellers Donlos, then it's mostly just weak. Ah, Corbett says that's correct on the, the topic of skin being an organ. I thought I read that, read that somewhere. 
Eric says, fun fact five, you can control white people with cheese. Is that true? If they're American, it has to be plastic cheese. All right, so what are we talking about with bases? Kind of to illustrate something I threw together in that improvised beat a second ago, the idea of using a vocalized chest bass can also be kind of doubled as like a high synth sound. I did it there and I wanted to kind of explain the technique and how that works. So vocalized chest bass, to recap for folks who might not have heard our breakdown of this bass type in the past, starts with a really heavy sigh because it's low in your lungs, in their chest areas where it gets its name from. So if you breathe out really heavily and force that sound low, just like a heavy sigh of frustration is the way I learned it, which is pretty good explanation. You get kind of a and when you get kind of used to doing it and you're, you're pushing a lot of air through your lungs outwards and forcing it low into your chest, you get a rumble. You could feel it. And that's how you're getting the that's just regular chest bass. Let's see. Corbrick says, that's true, Eric. On the topic of cheese control, dude, trust me. Eric says, just mention to a white guy who thinks that cheese is delicious and you can control them. Sarlet says, fun fact six, the acid in your stomach is strong enough to corrode the insides. Your insides, if you don't eat, build, eat to build up meat wall. It is technically true. Eric says, Corbett, you, you don't think I own, you think I don't own sleeves? And Iconic says, fun fact, cursing has been proven to reduce pain. Ever wonder why it's a good amount of a women in labor is swearing like sailors? That's why. Uh, I believe it. It is a cathartic release of stress. <laughs> Wazzy's saying that's called ulcers, bro. Yeah, well, that's technically true, too. I think ulcers are caused by your stomach acid being too strong to burn holes, essentially, in your, your stomach. Ah, Bits is back. Nick says, I'm off game now. All right, well, I'm I'm glad you're here hanging out, Bits. <laughs> Wazzy says, why am I still suffering? Why are we here? Just to suffer? All right, let's get back to chest bass. So the idea of taking that heavy sigh and forcing it low in your chest is how you get regular chest bass, that rumble. The <sighs> vocalizing it is just taking that heavy sigh sound and doing a vocalized hum over it with your voice. Just a, uh, not a distorted like throat bass or anything, literally just singing and doing that sigh at the same time. And the layering of sounds creates a distorted bass type, and that's how you get vocalized chest bass. And it sounds like, and it's very weird to me learning this one because it, it you would think that it's causing some sort of strain in your throat but it's just the combination of the rumble layered with your vocalization and that's how you're getting a so if I just don't vocalize it it would sound like that's the rumble and then putting the voice on top of it you're getting that distortion and then closing your mouth gets a bit of synth resonance and that's how you're getting a and it's really neat sound and you can do a lot with it and kind of practicing it learning how to do things like change pitch and change the the layering and kind of texture on it is really neat when it comes to vocalized chest bass um, it's one of my favorites and I really do need to practice it more I see now we're talking about inflicting psychological damage via dolls. Oh, Wazzy says, my favorite noise time, the subwoofer. Oh, you like the vocalized chest bass, huh? Like, I don't do it super often, but uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a, a lesson here on kind of variations you can do, and hopefully that'll be interesting. So again, 
just taking your voice and layering it with that heavy sigh is how you're getting the and doing things like changing pitch you could do something i think i put this into a loop i don't remember you can do things like go high to low or low to high so maybe like a and that's combining it with uh, vibration bass a little bit there and you could change pitch that way and one thing that's kind of fun is you can go high with it and use it like a high synth it's still done the same way it's just putting a bit more stress on the throat because you're tightening it a little for a high sound and so that sounds like with vocalized chest bass it sounds like which sounds like Marge Simpson that's how I explain that sound to people but you're doing the same forced like heavy sigh but you're going high with your voice kind of like a instead of just a ha and that's how you're getting a and then using your lips to sort of control where the sound's coming out you're getting it to resonate just like the other one and creating that high synth is fun because that's how you're getting the sound I was doing before I was doing something like and learning how to practice doing that sound higher is kind of different muscle memory but done the same way it's just practice forcing your voice into the upper register and then combining it with the distortion that's how you're getting the kind of fun kind of fun in a different way to sort of employ bass technique instead of just low end like heavy drop type stuff uh, let's see. Iconic says, funnest fun fact. Sleep is just time travel to breakfast. I agree, except I never wake up for breakfast. Uh, Beetle. Eric says, beetles are crushed up to produce a dye that makes all your favorite candies red. I did know that. It's an, an extract from the, their shells, I think. Bit says, anyone else here just making weird noises while he explains? Uh, yeah, that's sort of the point of talking about sound theory and technique bits. Again, for folks who are curious about learning beatboxing and want to sort of get into it, that's why I spend certain parts of the jam streams going through sound technique and theory. So if people want to just mess around with things and, and learn, then it's kind of like a jump off point to say, if you're curious, here's how this particular sound works and you know, give, give a resource. So yeah, if, if, me doing this gets people interested in beatboxing then I think I've done part of my job as a content creator in the scene Eric says I don't have a mouth to make the sounds or scream you have no mouth and you must beatbox uh, Wazzy says if you had to rename beatboxing what would you call it hmm Beatboxing is an art form, and to me, it's considered a, a musical technique. So it would have to be uh, something that reflects a technique, kind of like playing a guitar, playing a wind instrument, playing drum set. So if I was going to rename it officially, then maybe I would call it something like um, Mouth Instruments. I know it's a basic name. But uh, it would be kind of self-explanatory. You can make it fancy and call it like oral orchestrations, which could be taken out of context. Don't do that. Um, but thinking back to the 80s when beatboxing sort of originated, I believe, don't quote me on this because I, I wasn't in the scene back then. The term comes from the fact that people were trying to replicate like stereo sounds like a boombox using their mouth and I think the term beatboxing sort of caught on because people are like oh yeah it's like a boom box with your mouth hence term beatbox but I I can't prove or uh, provide a citation but that's where I think it came from okay let's see what what's the chat saying Corbett says, quote, Kento Nanami, having to work for a living sucks. Uh, 
That's mood. Iconic says I'm actually about to lab all Oraku beatboxes. Oh, what what game are you labbing? What fighting game are you labbing in Iconic? Uh, we haven't talked about fighting games recently, but uh, let me know what you're playing. Eric says cats have three eyelids. I did not know that. That's kind of weird, but interesting. All right, so let's see. We talked about vocalized chest bass. Ah, Iconic says Street Fighter 4, DiCaprio is one of the worst with charge characters. I see. I haven't played SF4 in a very long time, and I skipped 5. Um, I have not decided if I'm going to play 6 yet because I suck at Street Fighter games, but I do like them. Core break, redeem, hydrate. Thank you. I'm continuing to drink water. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about this base variant I've been working on. It's still a work in progress, and I've been practicing with it more, trying to get it consistent and clean. But looking at beatbox technique and looking around the community, I don't know if this one exists because I've never seen anybody do it. Maybe it has a different name. So I'm just going to go by what I'm calling it for the sake of notation. And if at some point I talk to a pro and they're like, oh yeah, that's called, you know, the whatever base. I was like, oh, okay, then I'll just change the term. It's fine. Um, but the, the actual base itself is a variation on throat base, which sounds like kind of between throat and vibration base depending on how high or how low I make it uh, but I call this one rev base because it sounds like an engine revving and it's basically just a textured throat base that has kind of like an airy texture layered on top of the and so in practice rev base sounds like Instead of, it has that texture on it, and it sounds like, sounds kind of like you're revving up an engine. And if you're going from high to low, then you get that effect. You can do it low to high, doesn't matter, because it's just an air filter, a distortion filter over a throat bass. So if you were doing something like, in a beat, I think dubstep-ish, like a drop, you could do something like, And again, I have never heard someone do this this type of distortion on a bass. I'm sure someone's thought about it. I need to do more research. But the way you do this is essentially doing uh, it's kind of like a a Donald Duck type noise. Now I got to think of how I'm explain this because I haven't taught this particular technique before. But if you take your tongue in your mouth and try and force air around the sides, you get kind of a and let's see, if I put the tip of my tongue on the roof of my mouth and just force air out the sides without moving my tongue at all, that's how you're getting a change the position of your mouth, that's how you're getting kind of a, a warble noise. That that And I think that's how people can do like the Donald Duck sound. But you're taking that distortion and just applying it to the throat bass itself. The so it goes from to it's kind of a subtle distortion, but if you're using like a revving sound and going from, you know, high to low or low to high, that's how you can change the position of your mouth and close it. Just make it sound like it's going kind of subtle by itself, but you can hear it kind of taper. The pitch tapers a little bit like it's kind of just, uh, what's the sound? What's the music term? Uh, decrescendo? You can see the volume sort of tapers off, so it sounds like the pitch is going either downwards or upwards, depending on where you put in that distortion. <laughs> Eric says, Wops can remember faces. 
Uh, I wonder if that was wasps. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't talk to a lot of soaking wet cats, <laughs> as Edward says below. Yeah, that's a question for the veterinarians, I suppose. And so this idea of a rev bass type sound, I think has a lot of potential to kind of mix up different things in a, a bass type environment. I just haven't quite figured out what I want to do to kind of manipulate the sound because with that distortion, you could do just a tapered sound like that goes either up or down. I think you could open and close your mouth rapidly to get it to sort of oscillate too, kind of like a, so if you did that, It'd be something like, and it sounds more kind of like a, again, it's an engine to me. It's what it sounds like. So I call it rev bass, but putting it into a beat could be interesting depending on what your effect is. If you want it to be like a drop and really focus on the distortion and texturing on the bass sound itself, or if you want it to just be kind of an effect that's in the background, it kind of depends, but it seems like something really interesting. So I'm going to keep, messing around with it and coming up with ideas and we're going to slot this into the sort of course schedule as it were it's a developing sound and, and I'll come back to it in the future um, but yeah again I don't know if it exists I have never seen someone do that particular type of distortion but if I ever find out the true name for it I will make sure and let everybody know because I don't want to take credit Eric says to Edward I don't know, but I know the type of people like you and I never forget anything. Well, is it elephants? Stereotypically, they say elephants never forget. This is the, the internet equivalent. All right, so let's see. Let us transition over to the BGM creation side. And I think I'm going to do what I did last time and sit down for this because I don't need to be completely standing upright in order to just do sounds for the loop. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go refill my water bottle and get some additional water. So let me put a filler sound in the background and then I will be back in one minute. So maybe we can do something like... A shout out to Super Bossa Nova. All right, I'm going to leave that right there, and I will be back in one minute with more water.
right. Let me make sure I got my mic set up here. Let me turn that off for a sec and make sure we're still getting the same sound levels as before. Basically, when I have to step away uh, and I've got the loop set up, I've got to turn the mic input all the way off because I can't mute the source itself if I'm playing something since all the loops and sounds are are playing through one sound source in OBS. And then I just got to turn my mic sensitivity back to where it is so that I can talk again. I see Eric has offered us a fun fact about the flexible properties of the human posterior. That is good to know and a little horrifying. Eric says, Raku died again. Yeah, my model tends to go to sleep whenever I jump off camera. Iconic Redeem Hydrate, thank you. Eric says, did you win? I won water. All right, let's clear this. Now let us see what we're going to do. So I had this idea. This was something I wrote down, and if we had time in the last jam stream, I would have started exploring some ideas for this one. But I had this idea of trying to create like an 80s funk type beat. And this is not something I've done before, so this is going to be an experiment. And I was thinking before the stream today how I wanted to try and replicate some of the, the sounds of kind of older 80s funk R&B Synth, synth instruments because from what I'm thinking uh, this is going to kind of be from like the synth angle like a drum drum kit as opposed to actual in-person drums but I'm thinking I can use reverb a little maybe a low reverb to sort of get kind of more of a synthetic echo on the instruments themselves so to illustrate what I'm talking about, I kind of want to do a mid-tempo kind of funky beat and then think about how we're going to combine maybe synths and bass to come up with something like it's got a bit more kind of a, I want to say like high energy, but kind of a bit more of a punchy energy to it. And I need to change my caption or I forget again. We're doing BGM. Brainstorming. There we go. Sour Lad, redeem save reminder. Thank you, Sour Lad. As we get underway and start messing around with stuff on the loop proper, I definitely need to remember to save. So thank you for that. All right. So if we're doing something kind of with a bit more, kind of more energy, I was thinking a combination of kicks and. PF snares and then maybe trying to put a reverb distortion on it so it sounds more like those old drum kit sounds you heard and so I wrote down this particular rhythm because if I didn't write it down I was going to forget and what I want to work around is this this particular rhythm and then we can see how we're going to put it into to practice so kicks PF snares and let's figure out how to sort of get some good effects on it so the rhythm I wrote out sounds like and then repeats. So let's see. I'm going to try and put it with with some reverb on it just to see what it sounds like. And that's definitely too much reverb. So let's see. What does the, the snare sound like? I put it at about, about 35%. So it would be... You try that and then get it recorded and see. Wazi says, <laughs> redeem to save Raku from his demons. Wake me up inside. Can't wake up. Save me. All right, so let's let's put it about here and see if we can get the beat recorded and see what it sounds like. 
So where's the tail going to be? If we go... Final sn PF snare is the end of the loop. Let's try that. I might have to fiddle around with that a little bit. Yeah, I think I can time it there. Let's see if I can just get it to line up better. See if we can get it to repeat. that's looping cleanly. Wazi says, saving you from bad beats. Eric says, also, our belly bottoms used to be our mouths. Conjures up quite a bit of imagery. All right, so let's let's work with this particular version of the beat now. You, you folks should be able to hear everything looping. Hopefully, I'm not drowning, getting drowned out by it. Let's try and add a K snare. Oh, I see. Edward says he's talking about the umbilical cord. Lion says, pretty sure Eric means belly buttons. That makes more sense. In at least in humans, in development, they eat via that magical cord. Sorry, Eric. I, I just read the chats as I see them. It's all good. I'm not a biologist. All right, let me see if I can double up the snares. I want to add a, a case snare over those. So something like a... Like a of course, I need to actually hit all of them. Try that again. Oh, I should add a reverb. Ah, that's fine. Well, this is can you add the subwoofers to this one? You mean the, the vocalized chest bass? I definitely can. In fact, I had an idea for a, a supplementary bass line that I could do. Wazi says I refuse to call them by their name. Well, the only reason why I ask is because a subwoofer type, like a heavy hitting low end sub type sound has different techniques in beatboxing. Like, again, maybe Wazi doesn't care, but I'm going to explain it anyway. So the vocalized chest bass would be something like a... But a sub bass lip roll, which gets you that low end punchy type noise too, will be something that sounds like. And a loose inward lip roll for, again, low hitting stuff, like a sub rattling type bass, would sound like. So I'm all for employing sounds. It's just we need to be clear about which technique we're using that way we don't get confused <laughs> eric says submissive li liberal i said sub bass lip roll eric which again sounds like <laughs> doesn't have much reverberation which is why for really low punchy type noises i like using the the loose inward lip roll because it gets a little bit of reverberation and that's how you're getting a 
that's a fun one. But talking about what Wazzy's putting out there for a suggestion, let's see if we can do the vocalized chest space though. Maybe we can add like an F texture on it, like a that's easier for me to do the sound for whatever reason. But I was thinking a bass line that would sound for combining it with the kind of funky beat. Some that sounds like, let me see if I can get the line up right. Now, the real question is, if I take guitar to bass, which adds low end under whatever input you're doing, usually works best with singing because it takes your sung notes, like a hum, and creates an electric string bass type noise with low end underneath it. But I can't remember if I've tried combining guitar to bass with vocalized chest bass because it's a different type of input. We can see what it sounds like. Uh, let's see, I gotta turn dynamics off, but let's just try and record something and just see what the sound playback sounds like. That's interesting. You're still getting the distortion from uh, the vocalized chest bass, but now it's putting a, a pronounced low end underneath it. I might be able to turn it down and get it to sound a little bit less kind of vibration-y. I'd rather it sounds like sound like just a, a low end. If it's too too weird, I can always just take that off. Oops, let me drop the, the level down. I have, to, I have to talk a little bit louder because I have dynamics turned off on my mic in order to put guitar to bass on. So let's turn that off. Let's try with a little bit lower setting and then uh, record the bass and see what happens. Okay, the the pitch change is, is, is a little bit difficult because it's pretty pretty low in my register, but it gets drowned out a little bit because of the distortion. So I think if we're gonna be doing it this way, I need to go just regular uh, non guitar to bass and just try and get the vocalized chest one to be more clean so that you can actually hear the progression. Maybe I could start higher up; it'll be easier. But let's put the. All right, now dynamics are back on, so now you should be able to hear me a little easier. All right. Iconic says, be right back, I'm gonna eat. All right, Iconic, enjoy your meal. We'll, we'll be here plugging away at, at BGM. All right, so we could go maybe higher instead of pretty low towards the bottom of my, my vocal range. We could try and go higher and, and then drop down and go up. Maybe something like <laughs> might be too low. I definitely want to do a three note progression that goes high, low, and then then a step, a couple steps up. But I'm trying to figure out where to start it. So let's try and get it recorded and see if I can at least get the texturing and sound to come out. We have a couple different options. If I can't get it to, to line up and sound right, we can also do it with regular guitar to bass and then maybe duplicate it. So let's see if we can get it, get the notes correct first. Oh, 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 oh,
we could even do which might be easier is do the guitar to bass separately and just layer it on top so let me let me turn that back on and see same notes just another effect being layered instead of at the same time so let's see Very subtle. You can sort of hear the string, electric string bass underneath, but it's, it's very subtle. You can try and boost it a little bit and see if that works. That's a little bit more pronounced. Now you can sort of hear the, the additional bass and low end underneath the notes. That's not bad. I think we'll leave that there for now. I wonder what happens if we just put a sustain note. That'll probably be out of key with the, the second part of the progression. Let me try it. I have one shot on, okay, let me fix that. It, it looks like because of the way the loop cuts off, it's not constant. I still haven't quite figured out why that doesn't work. There is a br break before the, the single note repeats, but it's very subtle. I don't know if I'd want to have a sustained note on there under under that. I think that might be a little distracting, even though it doesn't sound like it's way out of key. vinyl flick that creates a really weird effect hmm. I'm trying to see what would happen if I took the slicer effect and applied it only to the sustained note to chop it up Yep, that is definitely out of sync with the rhythm. Mm. Okay, that won't work.
That is ring modulator. I want to put that on just the baseline and see what happens. He says, I like that it looks like Raku is sleeping when he's listening to playback. Yeah, it's because m uh, my model closes his eyes whenever I look down. It looks like I'm deep in thought when in reality I'm just looking down at the, the loop, which is right below me, where I'm, I'm sitting here in the chair. says he's using his telepathy powers to beatbox. I wish. I wish it was that easy. Eric says the dead outnumber the living 15 to 1. That, yeah, that's that's horrifying. It was the skeleton war. Skeleton warriors. I remember that show. Alright, let's figure out some other things we can layer on our sort of funk adjacent beat. I wanted to do something with synths. Let's see what we can do with the the synths that would which will produce that sort of newt newt noise. Let's see, where is it? I think it is on input effect A. Ah, there it is. All right, so if we try and turn that on, we get this effect. Get that noise. But how is it picking up the inputs? Hmm. Oh, what if I turn it down? Hmm, not. Is it based on non-vocalized inputs? Like a. Oh, well, that that'll do it. All right. why it's not picking up. That's weird. Eric says to Wazi, you think that your wet skeleton can beat a dry one? I never says that was kind of loud. Yeah. I wonder if the... I right, may turn that off. Because I don't have dynamics on since this is input track A, I have to talk a little bit loud. But the actual synth is not picking up. So I gotta, I gotta mess with the, the settings on it to get it to actually get that meow meow noise. Let me see if I can figure out why it's doing that. Nope, still nothing. Should be doing it based on input. Is it resonance? Tells you how often I use this particular effect. But it it is it is picking up. I just don't know why it's not doing it consistently. 
try and turn frequency down. Messing with decay. There's three settings on the, the synth instrument here, and it's frequency, resonance, and decay. And I don't know what's causing it to not not ping whenever there's an input. Hmm. Well, I'm not gonna waste time trying to figure that out. Eric says. That sounded like Neko Arc from Melty Blood. And I wanted it to be able to. Okay, it's back on. I wanted to get that really uh, like keyboard synthesizer type synth noise, but I don't know why it wasn't working. I'll have to figure out what borked my setting on that. Oh, I said. I see Eric says, also it's possible to vomit poop. It's called feculent vomiting. It can happen when there's a blockage in the antenna. Oh, God, that's terrible. That would be a nightmare. Your human bodies are weird. All right, let's see what else we can potentially do here. try and do granular delay and see if we can get that kind of metallic synthy type noise to sort of apply that way. Let me see if I can get that to work. Alright, I have to I have to have my, my dynamics off again, but with granular delay on, it sounds like this. Turned all the way up. But you can sort of use it on the dial here to change how much the filter effect is going all over whatever the input is. But I've used this one with clicks, or I recall, let's see. what I'm messing around with that you can sort of hear it's probably a little bit low on the volume is I'm combining the filter effect with the granular delay which creates this kind of muffled metallic synth noise it's kind of an interesting combination of sounds that uh, a beatboxer I know showed me you can use the sort of pitch shift click inputs to create kind of this it sounds kind of like a resonating noise almost like someone's falling down the stairs uh, but I'm trying to put a rhythm that that lines up with what we're doing and we'll see what it sounds like so I'm gonna turn it back on and you won't be able to understand me but let me see if I can get some recorded that'll work here
All right. Now I can talk normally again. So it might be a little bit subtle, but you should be able to hear in the back a, a an offbeat two note uh, synth distortion. And that's what I created using the granular delay and filter. Kind of interesting. I, I I don't dislike the way that sounds. What happens if you were what happens if we reverse it? Oh, hmm. Almost sounds like a reversed record cut when it's it sounds like that. Hmm. Oh, this is applying a synth preset to the whole series of loops that are playing at once, and just it basically sounds like it's underwater when you do that. This is filter. Just filter over the whole whole series of tracks. Where is my beat repeat? I kind of want to mess around with a pseudo type drop thing and see if we can get that to work. Here it is. Ah, Sorrow Ladder Redeem. Save reminder. Thank you. I've not saved anything I've been doing for the last 40 minutes. Much appreciated, Sorrow Lab. Starlight also redeemed hydrate. I will drink more water. Yes, thank you. All right, let's see what else we can we can do. I think I want to set these four tracks like this. This is the, the sort of prototype for the BGM track. Now let's start to think about how we're going to actually structure the the performance of it. So if we were to stop, the way I sort of envision it in my head would be starting with the beat by itself maybe bring in that synth distortion then the bass Oh, not that by itself because of the pause. Mm. All right, start over. So you go a couple bars with this, the beat. Bring it in, distortion. I'm gonna bring the regular beat in. Another one, sustained bass line. I'm 
Well, that's beat scatter. I don't like the way that sounds. Let's beat shift, nah. I will think a little bit about whether or not I want to add kind of a, a pseudo drop to this one. One sec, I'm just fixing my camera. We did a pseudo drop that sound like this. Interesting. This is taking the lo-fi filter effect, and this is applying it to everything, including the bass line. But if you turn down lo-fi to maybe like 30%, It's kind of this muffled distortion over the whole series of tracks, which is kind of interesting. It almost sounds like the whole thing is is being run through like a really grainy filter. What if we did this? It's kind of an interesting idea. What if we did drop into this lo-fi distortion? Sarlad says, sounds like a song in Crash 2 sewer levels, and I love it. Waz well, says, call it popcorn in a metal bowl. Let us let us kick around ideas for what we're going to call this thing. Popcorn in a metal bowl is a little bit too long of a, a BGM track title, so let's try and condense it down. But I had a way to selectively set the lo-fi to only apply to the bass filter it'd be nice because I kind of like the fuzz but I can't set it to do that on the sustained bass note without going back and setting it for all the other ones because the drop applies to all of them too that's one thing the loop station doesn't do you can't set individual track effects to only apply to certain tracks. It's all or nothing. Let's see, Starlet says Pong 2. Uh, Eric says, this goes perfect with a Penguin video I was watching. Wazi uh, says, microwave accident? Metal popcorn sewer storage. Eric says, micro pop. I kind of like metal popcorn. That one, that one seems to be fitting. And interestingly enough, hold on, let's do this. I'm going to save before I screw up anything. Write this. Online Tamer says, techno jug band. You don't have kind of like the, the resonating deep jug noises for that which does give me an idea for something to try in the future though but uh if we take our our rhythm and then we make it faster this is at 117 beats per minute right now This is at 160 beats per minute. It is considerably more stressful.
it is three fourths of a drum and bass song if you make it that fast. Now it's an offbeat rhythm. This is just using beat repeat at different intervals to repeat a section. This is what happens when your computer blue screens. Interesting switch to the overall feel and tempo, but I don't think I would want to have it that fast. I want to keep with the sort of mid funky tempo. Going back to the, the rough draft of how this thing would be performed. So definitely leading with the beat, the beat and then bringing in the, the distortion and then bass line and sustain bass note at the same time in order. Now the real question I have to wrestle around with when thinking about this is whether or not I want to drop in there because we need to kind of go from a drop to a different version of the, the track. Usually that's how I structure things. Well, we don't have to. Edward says, Funk Machine 3000? I still think it's funky. I wanted to have that synth in there, but I'll see if I can get it to work offline when I, I sit down to record this one. If not, then that's fine. But I would like to figure out why it's not picking up inputs for future. So let's see. We go starting with the beat. Bass. Oh, we can add a shaker line to this. That might not be bad. Because there's no hats. I just realized there's no hats at all. What if we added something like a... Kind of like a... What are those shaker type things? We could add hats. We could add a shaker. Hmm. What would a uh, hat run sound like? Mm, I've done that before. Let me see if I can get a, like a shaker line in here. Oh, it's with the sun one shot too. Eh, all right, let's fix that. Swazi says reverse after drop. That, hmm, we could try and reverse. See, the problem is doing a reverse after the drop on the fly. I can't set all of the individual loops to reverse at the same time. I have to turn it on per track. But if we s select a set of the instruments or just have it apply to like the synth, the, the two note synth, and have that reverse as soon as it drops, I can do that. I can do that quick enough. Uh, otherwise, I could basically record it in basically you know, two two alternate versions. But if I was performing this live, reversing all the tracks is not something I can do with one button. Uh, Edward says, oh yeah, I forgot to mention the lack of hats earlier. Let's figure out what we can add to complement that. If we did a, a eighth note hat run, what does that sound like? Not a, I didn't want to pause there.
Hmm. I think that the rhythm is in line with everything. It might be off slightly on like one one hat at the end. I can fix that later. Another thing I was thinking would be to add like a, an open, an open hat, something like a. I think that would be not that interesting though. Hmm. Let's keep that on there and not try to do the drop. doing it. It's just hard to tell because it's a rapid rhythm. Alright. Let's run with Wazzy's idea about re reversing sections of this. So we go trying to do is see if I could take the drop as soon as I turn the drop off go into reverse and I don't think I could do it exactly at the same time I think it would be slightly offset in rhythm let me try it again turn that off That's what the reverse on the bass too. Uh, that doesn't sound very good. But on the two note synth, I think that's pretty functional. I will think about how I want to do that. If anything else, I'll just record an alternate version of this with the reverse and then I'll just splice them together when I edit this in, in post. That's fine. Eric says, another fun fact is that we will never know everything we have forgotten. That is true, and that's kind of an existential crisis. But you are correct. Alright, I have another idea. We could come out of the drop with the reverse off and then alternate. Ah, Iconic's taking off. Iconic says, gotta go now. Thanks for the beats and vibes. Raku, take care. And bye, chat friendos. Later, Iconic. Thanks for dropping by. As always, it's good to have you hang out and chill with us. I hope the rest of your Sunday evening is fantastic. We're we're wrapping up relatively soon here. I finished experimenting with this particular track. Yeah, I... I like the idea of coming out of the drop to go. Oh, I'm on shift, that's why. I will think about it in the future if I want to have it just be 100% reversed after it come out of the drop, or if I want to alternate it. Like that. Alright, now we think about how we're going to outro it. We maybe have it repeat with the reverse for a little bit. 
cut everything out. Maybe end with the bass line. So everything sort of drops out one track at a time after we, we repeat the, the reverse one for a bit. And then it sort of narrows down. And then the last thing before the track cuts off would be you get the, the bass line maybe for two repeats. One. And then that's it. Nope, that's it. Now that we have the hat line, that could affect how we start to We could bring in the, the two note synth and the hat run at the same time. rest or have it drop out for a second and be just a synth for one repeat and then bring everything in at once we could do that a lot of options That's kind of how I imagined implementing the reverse. Basically, we have the regular one on for one, and then we flip it to reverse it, and then have that run out until we run through it for several, and then eventually outro the song. Interesting. All right. I'll have to think about how I want to do that progression for the actual final recorded track, but I think we have a pretty good rough draft for that one. So name wise, I'm liking metal popcorn. I will make a note. The last couple jam streams worth of songs are some of the ones I've thought were pretty interesting. We had the, Dance of Horses one from last last stream and then I can't remember what one was before that but at some point maybe hmm, if I don't stream tomorrow then I can spend some time doing recording I will think about it I'm still working on next week's stream schedule we might go Wednesday Thursday Saturday or something like that. I haven't figured it out yet. But there's a whole whole slew of stream sounds that I want to go and record because that collection is almost done. Uh, my plan was to have it done by April. So if we can do that by the end of the month then I can get that uploaded and out. Then that would, that would work for me. But I think we will go ahead and call that a jam stream. Where did I go? Where's my model? YouTube Studio. Uh huh. That's never happened before.
That was weird. I, I think my model was gone for like five minutes, and I didn't even notice. I don't know what happened. That was weird. <laughs> Edward says, Rip Raku, I can almost still hear him. Weird, I I've never had my model just blink out of existence like that. Oh well, we have fixed it. But uh, yeah, we'll call that a jam stream for today. Eric says, I still can't believe that Raku died of Ligma. Oh no. Not Ligma. Not these nuts. Let us see who is online to raid. Oh, Zekko's, Zekko's channel is playing Elden Ring. We could go and raid him. Yeah, let's do that. Well, just says thanks for streaming. Yeah, thanks for, for tuning in, folks. This was uh, an interesting mix of content we went over today. Hopefully, the, the beatboxing stuff is interesting. I will be... Figuring out what we're going to do for the next one of these, probably in um, stream schedule, not next week, but the week after is going to be weird because I'm going to be out of town. But as usual, I appreciate all of you folks hanging out. So let us go to the outro and let's go raid Zekos channel. Alright, we got the outro here. Right, set up and let's go raid the homie. Alright, good to go. Yep, like I said, thanks for hanging out today, and I will catch you folks in the next stream. Have yourselves a good evening.